Hello everyone, my name is Jess and presenting with me is Yasmin. We are both Google Cloud product managers. Thank you for taking 20 minutes to learn more practical tips and best practices for how to save more faster on Compute Engine. Google Cloud is making it simpler and easier to save money. First, we'll share best practices on VM family selection to ensure you're optimizing for workload performance while minimizing costs. We'll also provide tips on how to save on licensing costs, show you how you can save by optimizing resources, and finally, how you can leverage discounts to quickly and easily save more money. Let's jump in. We have hundreds of predefined machines and customizable options for your workloads. One major part of optimizing costs is choosing the right VM family. As of September 1st, the free tier will only include the E2 Micro, which offers more CPU and RAM than the previous F1 Micro free tier VM. E2s are our lowest priced general purpose VMs, up to 31% savings compared to N1. E2 VMs can provide cost efficiency with similar baseline performance as N1s. Those running N1 Standard 1 can consider using E2 Medium to unlock some cost savings. Meanwhile, customers who require GPUs may want to consider N1s. Compared to N1s, N2s offer more than 20% price performance improvement for many workloads and support up to 25% more memory per vCPU. So for workloads that don't require GPUs, we recommend N2s. Finally, our new Tau VMs are built for scale-out applications and deliver 42% better price performance among leading cloud providers. We have various machine families depending on your use case. High performance, high memory, accelerator optimized. Bottom line, to optimize on both cost and performance, it's important to choose the right VM for your workload. To learn more about VM right sizing, check out INF300 at Next. Today, I'm excited to announce the launch of Spot VMs in preview. Spot VMs, enhanced preemptible VMs, are excess compute engine capacity, which is sold for up to 91% off on-demand prices. So availability and prices may vary. We provide more pricing predictability compared to Spot in any other leading cloud. We offer a minimum guaranteed savings of 60% and guaranteed changes occur no more than once a month. Like preemptible VMs, they are ideal for flexible fault-tolerant workloads like Batch, CICD, and HPC. But with Spot VMs, there will be no 24-hour limit, so you can run workloads on Spot for longer periods. You can secure deep discounts with Spot on all VM types, including custom machine types with a la carte GPUs and local storage. Finally, Spot extends to GKE standard, so you can automatically save on underlying compute costs while gracefully handling preemption automatically. For those migrating traditional enterprise workloads to the cloud, Google offers tools to help you reduce costs and optimize your existing licenses. One way to save on licenses is to bring your own license. We know that a vast majority of customers with enterprise agreements own perpetual licenses that can be brought over to Google so that they have the flexibility to use their existing licenses instead of repurchasing them on GCP. We call this bring your own license or BYOL on sole tenant nodes, and this can save you up to 55%. Windows licenses are a perfect example for using this, where licensing requirements are supported on sole tenant nodes. This is dedicated hardware to support license reporting and compliance. And with CPU overcommit, you can oversubscribe your hosts and maximize unlimited virtualization licenses. It helps you save money by maximizing BYOL licenses. This way, you can reduce per socket per core licensing requirements. This is ideal for un underutilized workloads with uncorrelated bursts like dev test or VDM. Many software licenses are charged on a per vCPU basis in the cloud. And for some use cases, you may have high memory requirements but lower CPU requirements. Extended memory allows you to increase your memory footprint without increasing the number of vCPUs you have to provision. For example, you could have a memory intensive database with a one vCPU machine and 512 gigabytes of RAM. And for that, you would need to pay for one vCPU worth of license. 
there is an extra charge to use extended memory, but many times its incremental cost is significantly less than the cost of licensing the extra course. Another way you could save on licenses is disabling simultaneous multi-threading, or SMT. By default, SMT is enabled on VMs, so a single physical CPU core can run on two virtual CPUs, each as separate threads. Disabling SMT reduces the number of vCPUs for each core from two to one, which can reduce your costs. For a multi-tenant pay-as-you-go workflows and compute engine, this can result in significant savings on total VM costs for many enterprise workloads. What if you don't pre-own licenses? So you use OS licenses provided through Google Images, but you still want a discount. We offer committed use discounts for SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for SAP, and we plan to add more license types in the future. The offering allows you to get up to 64% off on-demand pricing by committing to use licenses for one or three years. It seamlessly supports version upgrades for the license and requires no prepayment, so you don't have to type your investments. Yasmin will share more on committed use discounts shortly. Another important consideration in reducing costs is reducing waste, or in other words, optimizing compute resources and reducing running hours. Many providers require you to create power of two VM shapes, for example, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. This makes bin packing easy for the provider, but it can be wasteful for you. For example, let's say you only need 20 cores and 130 gigabytes of RAM. If you're stuck in the old world of power of twos, you would need to launch a 32 core VM and pay for 12 cores you don't need. You need to GCP, Google offers custom machine types. This allows you to pick precisely the amount of memory and CPU that your app needs, so you don't pay for anything more. Cloud can be complex. Active Assist recommendations simplifies and automates resource optimization by providing insightful, actionable recommendations for how to optimize your GCP experience. Recommendations currently provide optimization suggestions in four categories, cost, performance, security, and manageability. Today, we'll go over a few ways Active Assist can help you optimize performance while reducing cost by automatically identifying the fastest and easiest ways to make immediate improvements in both resource optimization and billing optimization. You can find these recommendations in the Recommendation Hub or in Context on VM resource pages. You can also consume recommendations via our API and BigQuery Export. BigQuery Export allows you to download the insights and recommendations and run your own custom analysis to uncover potential other opportunities to reduce costs within other projects across the organization. The first recommendation we'll talk about is right sizing. Finding instances that are over-provisioned and are good candidates for right-sizing is hard. The right-sizing recommendations engine looks for instances that require resizing for cost or performance by running multiple simulations and gives you insights by forecasting potential savings based on those recommendations. From there, you can click a button and resize the VM or select a more optimal VM family. That also applies for VMs within zonal makes that are not auto-scaled. Another type of recommendation offered is idle or unused resource recommendations. Here, the engine identifies any virtual machines that are unused, so no CPU usage or almost no network traffic, and any unused persistent disks along with potential cost savings. If a VM is idle, you can use one click to shut it down, or the disk is empty, it will recommend to remove it if it was not connected to any VM for more than 14 days or it'll create a snapshot which costs less than a persistent disk before removing the disk so the operation is reversible. Okay. Next, Yasmin will share a few more ways to reduce costs by optimizing resource utilization. Thank you, Jess. Another way to optimize your resource usage is to run resources only when you need them. VM scheduling is available today, which lets you schedule the start and stop of your VMs Using instance schedules to automate your deployment of the VMs can help you optimize costs and manage VM instances more efficiently. You can use instance schedules for both recurring and one-off workloads. A typical use case would be to handle cyclical or recurring workloads, for example, starting VMs in a dev or test environment at 9 a.m. and shutting them down at 5 p.m. every day, or to turn them off during the weekend. You can also use the scheduling to schedule one-time events like 
run machines for a monthly performance test or to set up machines for a training session for your staff or for your customers. With scheduling, we also offer natively integrated logging to achieve visibility and easy troubleshooting. If the load of your workload is variable over time, like web serving, provisioning a fixed capacity will be wasteful. And managed instance groups, or MIGs, can be a very good fit here. MIGs provide many benefits, one of which is the auto-scaling capability that creates more VMs when there is demand to be served and removes them as demand decreases. By using auto-scaling, we find that on average, customers can save up to 43% compared to provisioning VMs for maximum capacity dependent on peak times. I also want to share two other variations of auto-scaling techniques we have, predictive and scheduled. With predictive auto-scaling by, and by forecasting the future, we can start creating VMs ahead of the load to make sure that you always have enough serving capacity. For example, if it takes five minutes for new VMs to boot and start your application, then Predictive Autoscaler will create VMs five minutes ahead of load, so your app is ready to handle new demand right away. Predictive Autoscaling is using Google's machine learning model on historical load to predict future demand and improve application reliability. Now, what if your demand cannot be predicted based on history? We have scheduled based autoscaling to help you with that. Schedule scaling lets you define periods where you want the autoscaler to maintain a minimum number of VMs you specify. You can use schedule-based scaling to spin up VMs ahead of anticipated spikes, like every morning, or to have capacity for regular cron jobs. You can create also schedules for one-time special events like promo campaigns or product launches. In this coming section, we will talk about the last lever of cost optimization, which is discounting, and explore how you can optimize your discounts. Committed use discounts, or CUDs, provide deeply discounted pricing in exchange for a usage commitment. They are ideal for steady state usage and provide some of the deepest discounts on Compute Engine, up to 55% off. CUD discounts offer simplicity and flexibility where it can be applied to different machine sizes or cross-operating systems by default. The same code will be applied to other GCP services like Google Kubernetes Engine, JKE, and Dataproc. Community use discounts are flexible as you can bring VMs up and down and change their shapes and the commitment will still apply automatically. Any resource that, that does not qualify for committed use discounts automatically qualify for sustained use discounts. You cannot combine committed use discounts and sustained use discounts for the same resource at the same time. You can also use the committed use discount cost breakdown chart to monitor your cut costs and answer the ever so popular question, how much money are cuts really saving me? Here you can see that the black bar represent the cut fees and the blue bar represents the cut savings. By adding these two bars together, you arrive at a number that represents the net savings you get from buying cuts in a particular month's invoice. Another useful cut monitoring tool is the cut analysis dashboard, which helps you to visualize and understand the effectiveness and financial impact of the committed use discounts you have purchased. Using the cut analysis dashboard, you can analyze your compute engine resource usage alongside your commitments to answer questions such as, how, many, how much of my eligible usage is covered by commitments? And am I really fully utilizing my existing commitments? And to also answer, is there an opportunity to save more by increasing my commitments? You can also get help to know how much committed use discounts to buy by checking the CUDS recommendation, recommendation section in the billing console, which is also accessible through the recommendations hub. CUDS recommendations analyzes your resource usage trend over time and recommends how much CUDS to buy to optimize your savings, along with the dollar saving opportunity for these purchases. 
This gives you the peace of mind that you are making the right decision for your business. Permitted use discounts by default apply to the project usage where you bought them. However, by turning on billing account cut sharing, committed use discount can start to be shared across projects within the same billing account, which usually lead to higher utilization levels of the commitments. Once billing account level sharing is turned on, you start to have more options on how to attribute the fee and credit of your commitment to align with your internal chargeback model. The first option is proportional attribution, which is the default setting. This setting attributes the cut fees and benefits proportionally amongst the projects according to your, their usage. The second option, which will be available soon, is prioritized attribution, where you can specify in more detail how to attribute each cut amongst the project. Finally, we are excited to share that we are working on an even more flexible committed use discount model, so stay tuned for more information on this. Thank you so much for taking the time to attend this breakout session with us. If you have any feedback or questions about anything we presented today or about compute engine cost optimization in general, you can reach us at gce-cost-optimization at google.com. We also have a number of cost savings related sessions under the infrastructure track for you to check out throughout the conference. And with that, I'd like to thank you for joining us today and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.